Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to see how to build a death schedule exactly like the one you can see in here. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you learned anything from today's video. Let's go. If you recall from the video on that shield, and you can click on the link above if you haven't watched that, we went through this Excel file here where we demonstrated how you can reduce your payable tax or your taxable income in order to pay less tax. And in that particular video, I kind of skipped through the how I calculated the interest expense and the principal repayment. I basically said, so these are the values we're going to repay as part of the debt we acquired for the project. And today's video, I'm going to show to you how to calculate it. And all my calculations are done below here, as you can see. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So for this particular example today, what we're going to use, we're going to repay the principal in a fixed principal amortization. And for these, we need uh, the debt tenor. In this example here, we're going to use 10 years. And because we're going to pay a fixed annuity, we're going to divide the total debt, which is $15 million by 10. And that's going to give us a 1.5 million repayment every single year. And that's exactly what's being calculated in here. And we, when we add everything together, we get the 15 million repayment as principal. And essentially close the debt after year 10. And you can see, if, let me just change here to 12. So everything is adjusted uh, properly. Okay. So that's what we have here. So how to calculate the, or how to build this debt schedule in here. The first thing I do here, I calculate a debt flag, which essentially returns true if we are in the period where the debt needs to be repaid, or it returns false if we are in a period where we no longer need to pay the debt. And there's two cases where we don't need to pay anything. One is whether we are already beyond the year 10, okay, on, on year 11, 12, and so forth and so on, as we can see in here. And the other case is when we are on period zero, because remember, on period zero, essentially, we are assuming that there is no operations of the, the facility or the business or the power plant in the case of our channel in here. Okay, so that's essentially what it is. Uh, so let's see how we can we can build a formula so that it returns what we are what we need. Okay, so what we have what I have in here. I'm, I have an end statement here because two conditions need to be true at the same time, right? So one, we should not have zero here. And that's exactly the first argument. Let me go up here. So that's exactly the first argument I have here. So if the period is not zero and if the period is less than or equals to the debt tenor, then this should return true. And that's exactly what it is. Otherwise, it returns false. So that's a pretty easy and statements here we're just checking if two conditions are true and if they're both true it's going to return true otherwise it's going to return false and remember whenever we have a false statement okay it's the same of have zero okay so you get a number multiplied by false it's going to return zero because false equals zero and whenever we have a true value in your cell that basically represents number one so multiply anything by true returns the number we're multiplying then we have here a debt account where in the first row, I calculate the open balance for the debt. Then on the second row, we can add or subtract whatever we need to calculate. In this case here, what we're doing, we are subtracting the principal payment. That's what we have to do. We have to repay the principal, right? So we're repaying uh, the principal here. That's where we calculate it. And then we just close the balance. Okay. So what do we do here? Essentially, what we're doing here, uh, we're going to assume that we have a uh, open and closing balance for period zero of $50 million. And then for the next period, what we have is that always the open balance is going to be equal to the closing balance of the previous period. And we calculate the principal repayment and then we add everything together, as you can see here. So everything follows, uh, the formula follows along the debt schedule. Okay. Question is, how do we calculate the 1.5 million? So we already know that we have to repay 1.5 million as just said before, right? So the thing is like, how do we add a formula in here so that we only repay the debt when there is, when you're supposed to repay it? That's pretty straightforward too. Uh, the formula is quite simple. So we're gonna use the flag. So that's why we beat the flag for. Essentially what we're gonna have, we're gonna have to repay the 1.5 million and we're gonna multiply by the flag. 
if the flag is false, it's going to return zero. Any number multiplied by zero should be zero. And then in the end here, what I have, I just multiply by negative one. So that's the way uh, I basically do whenever I need to have a negative number in a row. Okay, because it, again, everything in financial models about how easy it is for the user to read the information, right? So it's much easier to read times negative one than to read something like this, where I have a negative one here in the beginning. Okay, so it's really unclear and even made a mistake now. So you can see, so it's really unclear and it's not easy to read. There's a negative one in there, okay? So that's how I do the model. So much easier when I press F2 here, uh, when I press F2 here and I wanna read the formula, it's clear to me that I purposely put negative one in here and 99.9% .9 of the time, it is because I want to, the number to be a negative number. Uh, I did that on purpose, okay? That's pretty easy. So we add everything together and then we have already our principal payment is scheduled in here. And as you can see here, because we're multiplying by false, everything returns false. And always make sure that you have a $50 million uh, total sum here, which is equal to uh, your closing balance or your, which should be equal to the amount of that you took. Okay, so that's basically it. Now we have to calculate the interest payment. And for this example here, we're going to use a 4% that interest per year. And the way we're going to calculate it is going to be that the interest payment is going to be applied to the open balance. And as you can see here, again, it's pretty straightforward how we're going to do it. So essentially, first, what we're going to have here, we're going to multiply what? We're going to multiply the interest that or the debt of the interest by the open value of the interest, which is $50 million, okay, as you can see in here. Then we're gonna multiply by the flag because we only pay the interest payment whenever the flag is true. And then we multiply by negative one because again, this is a cash outflow for the project and should be a negative number. That's it, very simple. So if you copy and paste everything across, we're gonna have these numbers in here, as you can see. It's worth noting to use the proper anchoring for the cell references as we have in here. And that's it, nothing more than it, okay? So down here, what I have, I just, I'm just copying and the numbers here and again multiplying by negative one because I wanna show this in a graph. And if you plot these numbers in here in a graph, that is not so nice because it gets a negative number, right? So that's not really nice. So the best way is just to plot this number in here. So if you plot these things in here, you can see they are reducing and have positive numbers. That's the only reason why I, I basically uh, plug the numbers in here. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you have learned. Please subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next video. Stay tuned.